So I want to start this video by saying uh, I'm not an expert. Uh, I've just done quite a bit of, of web research and I just wanted to make a video find, uh, showing what I found. Uh, if you guys choose to do this and you break anything or mess anything up, don't blame me, not my fault. Um, I have tried these fixes um, because otherwise these units would just be thrown in the trash. Um, so if I broke anything, it's not a huge deal to me because they were going to be garbage anyway. But um, yeah, if you choose to do any of this, anything that I'm going to talk about, uh, do it at your own risk. Um, I just wanted to share my findings. Hey everyone, I just wanted to make a real quick shaky cell phone video about these uh, Synology disk stations. This happens to be a DS1515+. Plus. Uh, we've used these at the place that I work for five or more years now, and uh, these things are dropping like flies. Uh, these Synology disk stations, are they have a, a few issues with them. Uh, one is there's a flaw, from what I can tell, in the CPU uh, that causes these things to not boot up. They'll still power on, uh, but they just won't boot up properly. Uh, the other issue is there is a, a transistor that goes bad, uh, and that seems to be the most common issue that we have seen. Um, and I'll show you where that is. Uh, the symptom is basically what you're seeing now. Uh, it's, uh, it is power plugged in to the wall. Uh, I'll do it back here. And um, the symptom is there's just no power. It just doesn't, it, you know, occasionally you'll get some power. If you leave it unplugged for a while, it'll kind of reset itself. Um, but there's just no power. It doesn't work. Um, so I did some research on the internet and basically found there's a transistor Q2, I believe it is, up in this upper left-hand corner, and that goes bad. Uh, when that goes bad, these things don't power on. Um, so what I found in my testing is you can basically jumper the, one of the left contacts to the right contacts here, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, to test if this will, if this will power back on. Uh, so let me grab my uh, cheap Harbor Freight multimeter, and I'll, uh, I'll show you what's going on. All right, so I got my uh, cheap Harbor Freight multimeter set in 10 amp mode here. Um, what I'll do is I'll just hit this contact here and the bottom one, if I can get it. And there you go. I don't know if you can hear that, but just by shorting those two contacts, it'll, it'll turn on. And that's how you know if this transistor is bad. Um, as soon as you take, a, take the... Uh, probe away it, it powered itself off um, now you might be able to get away with just putting a jumper in um, but that probably means that if you jumper it the power button no longer no longer works so it'll probably just remain on all the time um, here let me show you the front when I do that all right so forgive me for the crappy video you're propped up against a lemon here uh, it's been a while since I made a video but yeah, I'll go ahead and short those two contacts again. Go ahead and watch the power button. Should come on. There you go. And I'll take the uh, probe away. And it goes off. On. Off. So just like that. So that's how you can tell if that, uh, if that transistor is bad uh, on your Synology disk station. All right, so here's what the board looks like when you take it out. Uh, you do have to remove it from the chassis. Uh, I'm not going to go into to great detail about that. So you got to disconnect the connectors and remove the screws uh, to get the, the main board out. So yeah, there's these uh, these two fixes. The the resistor fix is for the C2000 bug, the, the bug within the, the CPU itself. And I believe the symptoms of that one are it'll power on, the unit will power on, but it may power off shortly afterwards. Um, so that resistor fix will fix that issue. Um, so I just do it anyway, because I have not seen that issue though. Most of the issues, actually all of the issues that I've seen <laughs> have been with this transistor up here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace that. And then I'm gonna do the battery as well, because um, almost every battery that I've checked, these units are six years old, seven years old now, and they're out of warranty. So I can't get them armed made with, uh, with Synology, we've tried. Um, so these would otherwise be garbage, as I had mentioned earlier. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and replace that battery as well. So I'm going to do that all off camera because my soldering skills really aren't the greatest. I'll be back. 
All right, so I finished the repairs. Um, I got the battery replaced, 100 ohm resistor fix installed, and the transistor. Uh, that's a BC847, uh, 100 ohm resistor. Uh, there's the value, if anybody wanted to look it up. A quarter watt and a uh, CR1220 lithium battery, a three volt. Um, so we have the resistor fix installed and that's on this first pin. I believe it's one and six, maybe? I'm not sure how the, the pin count works, um, but you can kind of see if I move it at a different angle uh, where that, uh, that resistor is soldered to. Uh, so that's the 100 ohm resistor. Uh, we have a new battery installed. Uh, and the transistor, I didn't even bother to clean the flux off the board, um, but that's a BC847. Um, yeah, I'm just lazy. I'm not even gonna bother cleaning that up. Uh, so yeah, let me throw all this back together and uh, we'll test it out and see if it works. So one thing I wanted to mention before I power back on, uh, one other test that I tried is uh, using an external ATX power supply instead of the, the built-in power supply, uh, which also did not work. Um, you can use a regular desktop power supply and uh, jumper a couple of the wires uh, to force the unit to power on. Uh, however, that did not work as well because you can actually get these uh, replacement power supplies pretty cheap on eBay, uh, but I didn't want to go that route if I, if I didn't need to. All right, so we have the unit all put back together minus the outer shell. Uh, we have the power plugged in. It did turn on initially when I plugged it in, which is a good sign, but you know, that's not a fair test of the power button. Uh, so I've not tested that yet. I did power it off, but let's power back on. And we have power, which is great. Um, so what I usually do is I will, uh, I'll leave this on for a while because when this thing starts to act up after it's been on for a while and then it powers, it's, you know, you power it off and power back on again a few times, that's when you'll start seeing the symptom that the power button won't work. Um, so I'll usually do like a, a burn-in test. I might put a drive or two in and just let it sit there for uh, four, out, four hours or so. And then I'll power it off and on a bunch of times until I can get it to act up again if, it, if it's going to. Um, but this usually fixes the issue. Um, so job well done. So I hope this helps a few of you out. Um, again, uh, I'm not an expert. I just wanted to share in a YouTube video what I learned. Um, I hope this helps some of you out. Thanks for watching, everybody.